Without any further ado, I want to introduce David Brown, Chief Executive and Director General of Mersey Travel, who's hosting us here tonight. And uh, I know he's going to be very interesting in what he has to say. So can you welcome David Brown? Thanks, Jerry. Can people hear me okay at the back? I continue, rather than me trying to dance around with a microphone. Um, I, Jerry said that I'm standing in for the mayor. Um, I'm not sure that I could do that, really. Um, mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll speak for 10 minutes, and then I'll let you judge whether I, I filled in for the mayor well enough or not. I think that the things that, that came across for me for, from that 10 minutes or so from, from the mayor of Liverpool um, were two things, really. One is he's clearly encouraging people to make their voices heard and really wants to engage with people about their views, um, and I guess that's from tonight and the other two sessions, to actually make sure that he's hearing and being informed by the views of people that live and work in the city. And I think the second thing was right at the end there, where he's stressing very much that he wants Liverpool to be ambitious and innovative. And I think they're the things that um, we need to bear in mind tonight as we, we think through the work that's being done, um, some of the ideas that some of the panellists are going to bring forward, but also in the feedback that we want to give to the Mayor to make sure that he hears that, and actually that we respond to his challenge around innovation and ambition. I want to talk um, briefly um, a little about a thing called a movement strategy. So um, we'll, we'll pick up why we've called it a movement strategy, and I want to talk you through the three or four steps that we've been through um, with other people in developing what that movement strategy and, and study should look like. Um, the strategic investment framework, as Jerry said, um, was, was set up and agreed in 2012, and really that's about what the city centre should look forward um, to being like over the next 20 or 30 years. And it's about making sure um, that that distinctive economic footprint that is Liverpool is continued, developed uh, and delivered over a period of time. But it's also building on the experience that the city's been through in the last decade or so and building on the strengths of the city and making sure that the economic growth that is there and is, is coming through gently um, is ramped up and continues to, to be seen. And it also um, does capitalise on that distinctive nature uh, of Liverpool. And it's about creating and building on things that have happened at the waterfront, the Knowledge Quarter, the commercial district around Lime Street, and making sure that we've got a plan for how we take that forward economically over the next 20 years or so. Part of the original um, CIF, Strategic Investment Framework, was um, looking at um, transport and movement in the city centre. Uh, and one of the original proposals was that we need to look at that uh, and make sure that we've got a proper transport system. And so about a year or so ago, um, in discussions with the CIF steering group, we really wanted to make sure that we got the thrust of this right. Uh, and I'm really keen that actually it's about movement, so it's not just about transport or travel. It's not just about cars and lorries and trains, but it's about movement. And it's about how people move around the city in, in the most efficient way. And when we and, and Liverpool City Council were asked to look at the movement strategy and movement study, um, I'm really keen, again, to make it quite a practical piece of work. So what we didn't want to do, as the Mayor said, I'm not a great lover of big long-term strategies that never happen, but actually how can we put in place a study of movement now and in the future to make sure that it's adding to the value of that strategic investment framework? Uh, and to the people that drew the, the short straw for that work were Mark McDonald. Uh, and, and we've got people here tonight that can talk through some of those schemes. But we commissioned them uh, in November last year because of their knowledge of um, previous transport schemes, their work they've done on Merseyside in Liverpool uh, in particular. I'm really keen that the movement study um, actually is not um, the main attraction or distraction. It's not about the transport per se, but it's about the movement of people now and how we can make sure that the movement in the future um, is it a part of the seamless offer of the development of the city centre and actually that it supports and, it, and sort of accommodates the growth that needs to happen but does that in a sustainable high quality way. So it's not just about putting in more roads and more railway lines but it's really about making sure that the movement and how people move around in the future really does support uh, and encourage the Liverpool brand through its economic development. I guess that might be quite unusual, really, because when you tend to get transport people stood up in front of audiences, they want to talk about trains and buses and roads and things like that. It's not about the transport system uh, as a mean, as a sort of end in its own right. It's really about an enabling factor to ensure that the city is the place that we want to live in and work in, but also can economically grow in a sustainable way. What we did, because we're, we're fundamentally... Um, 
public sector, um, we, we had to have a plan and a structure around it. And again, I'm a great believer in taking concepts and turning them into practical applications. And what we devised was a four-stage process. We wanted to make sure that the people that we were working for um, were bought in, and every stage they said, we're happy that you've done um, stage A, we want you to move on to, to stage B, so that we were making sure that people were being engaged and were um, signing off and being clear that what we'd agreed at each stage. The last thing I wanted to do was do 12 months worth of work and for people to say, well, you know what you agreed in stage A? We weren't quite on the same page there. Could we start all over again? Just because it's a bit of a waste of money, really, and actually um, the people of Liverpool won't see any benefit for the money that we've spent. The first stage, um, really, there's, there's some posh words around baseline audit and stakeholder workshops. This was really just trying to get a sense, a snapshot in time, where are people moving to and from within the city by mode, so by car, by train, by feet, um, by bike, How? what are those existing movements, and that's a baseline audit, to just try and draw a picture of exactly how are people moving around in this current time, but also breaking it down, because there's a tendency for people to say, well people moving around, that's one big group. When it's not, each of those users all have specific needs. So if you're a cyclist commuting into and from work, your needs are different um, to someone that's doing some leisure travel uh, to visit uh, tourist attractions. And what we wanted to do was understand individual groups of people's needs so that we could then look at how they're travelling now and how their needs might change over time. Really looking at what worked well and what, what doesn't work well at the moment. And I think in one of my, uh, having only been here 14 months ago, I think it was in my second month, I bumped into Jerry for the first time, and he said, this is great, but how are you involving people? So real people, so not a bunch of transport consultants actually coming up with a great plan, but real people. And so we made sure that we built in some stakeholder workshops there, again, just to put some real flavour on it, so that we can assume we know what cyclists want and what commuters want, but how innovative is, uh, it is to just go and ask, actually ask some real commuters and some real cyclists just exactly what their needs are now and in the future. The second stage was really taking the work that had been done by Liverpool Vision about the future economic developments that were likely to occur and what their impact would be. So as these things start to develop, the waterfront develops, the business district develops, Baltic Triangle develops, how will that impact that base need? So how will that impact on the way people move around now but also in the future? Because as you develop and the city becomes bigger, the city centre becomes bigger, people's requirements are different and their needs, etc. And what we asked um, Mark McDonald to do was give us a rough estimate with all this data about how existing movements will change and give us a bit of a feel for the volumes of movement and how they might change. And so we've got some really good examples around, we'll talk a little bit more about the Strand. So we know that there's a large volume of traffic um, in between the peaks that actually isn't stopping at Liverpool, but it's going from the north of Liverpool to the south of Liverpool, and it's just passing through. And we know from the analysis, if all the developments occur, that's just going to get so busy that in the off-peak, in the middle of the day, it'll be as busy as it is in the peak at the moment. And that's just an... In and again, when you start to see some of that drawn on a piece of paper with some numbers against it, it actually starts to focus your mind about what we need to do. A number of big ticket items started to emerge from that, and again, we've since checked that with a number of sort of stakeholders to say, look, this is what the analysis says, does it ring a bell with you? Uh, I won't go through all of them, but again, the Strand is a through route at the moment, so people are using it to and from Liverpool, but about 46%, I think, of the traffic that's on it at the moment is people that aren't calling in at Liverpool, but are going from one end to the other and passing through. The analysis says that will continue to grow. Um, as I say, so the off-peak will be like the peak at the moment, and it tends to be quite a lot of freight traffic, so as the port develops, there's quite a lot of freight traffic that will be using this route um, as, a, as a through traffic mechanism. Um, Lime Street, the analysis says more and more people will arrive at Lime Street by um, the Merseyrail system, high speed 2 hopefully, high speed 3 maybe. As that gateway becomes more and more important, it's actually not a great place to arrive at the city centre if you're then trying to walk or cycle or catch a taxi somewhere else. Um, there are two or three opportunities to get run over before you actually hit uh, some decent public realm. So again, as a gateway, we need to, to focus in on that. Queen Square, 14 million bus passengers use Queen Square bus station every single year. It's really, really important as an arrival and destination point, and then people disperse around the city. But actually creates quite a big capacity constraint in that area and acts as a bit of a barrier to urban realm around St George's Quarter, etc. So again, and that's, that's going to grow. So those issues are there now and actually will continue to grow. 
is a one-way system that circulates traffic around the city centre uh, and again that's not stopping it's just circulating around uh, and that includes buses as well as taxis as well as other vehicles they're actually not going anywhere they're actually going from A to B but they're actually circulating around the city centre. Again a lot of work um, identified that the pedestrian access for people and cycling isn't as clear as it could be that actually in what is quite a walkable city because it's not very legible, it's actually quite difficult. So the more people you can encourage to walk, and this is something that Transport for London have done, they just advise people it's actually a lot quicker and more direct to walk between A and B <coughs> rather than go down and get on the tube and come back up again. Uh, plus that saves them having to invest in the, the tube system. But again, it's just, it's just better information for people. And we also identified um, a number of issues associated to, if we're going to ramp up the volume of cycling, as the Mayor has indicated, actually having clear, safe cycleways and good access and signage was absolutely important. So these were the big ticket issues that were emerging that we'd need to address as part of any future movement strategy. I must stop saying strategy, must not, I'll get in trouble with the Mayor. Study. <laughs> uh, th the third element was really identifying what's the vision. And the vision is, we don't want to create a transport system because we're transport people. We want to have a seamless transport system that supports the growth of the city, both economically and sustainably and making sure that we're getting the right fit and that transport is enabling those things to happen but you almost don't see it and feel it in its own right. And actually it's about allowing sustainable economic growth, not just economic growth at, at, any, at any, any cost. We also sat with uh, our stakeholders and said that we need to actually have a hierarchy, so we need to be able to have a system as we bring forward solutions, a hierarchy to test it against. And the hierarchy you can see here is quite innovative um, but also supports sustainable and safe transport planning. So it puts uh, the most vulnerable users, like pedestrians and cyclists, at the top of that, so that we're actually taking that on board before we get into any detailed design. And then it works down in the hierarchy. And again, as you can pick it up from my tone, through traffic. So traffic that's just going through Liverpool to get to somewhere else tends to be near the bottom. And it's again, we'll be working that through. It's not about excluding different, different passages it's about actually working them all together in some sort of structured way. Probably the most interesting, exciting bit um, of, of the project. Um, I didn't get to go to any of these places, unfortunately, um, but the consultants actually did a bit of benchmarking. So where do we want, the, where do we want to look like? Um, where, and there are a lot of places in the UK that do things better than us, so we'd like to use some of those ideas. There's a lot of places in mainland Europe that also do them. And they're not all grand places like Barcelona, Madrid or Paris go to Gothenburg, it works, it's really functional, it works. You actually have the same level of rainfall in Gothenburg as you do in the north of England, you have the same climate, you same, same industrial heritage, so it's a good benchmark to, to, to use. And what we've done um, is, is a highlight uh, a long list of potential schemes that could help us resolve some of those big ticket emerging issues. And then, um, because we need to be quite structured, we've had quite a transparent appraisal system so all the schemes go into the big black box and get appraised against this hierarchy and, and their value added. And then what we're now trying to do as we move on to stage D is prioritise and package those things forward. We've got a long list of schemes. I can't remember who it was, 39 or something. It's a big long list. It's something like it's 39. Um, we've got those and we're starting to appraise those. And, and I think the thing to, to bear in mind is this, this is not an academic exercise. So actually, I'll come on to the end about why there are some opportunities here, but very much the SIF is about what we're going to do over 20 years, but what are we going to do in that first five years? So practically, what difference will you see in five years' time? What are we going to do with funding that we have available? Not as much as we would like, as the Mayor is pointing out, but actually we do have funding opportunities over the next five years. And we do have the opportunity, through mechanisms like this, to shape what that will be spent on to deliver both the outputs but also the feel of the city. And rather than put loads of words up, we tried to put some pictures up about what it might look like. So Lime Street, actually, by the time we've secured High Speed 2, High Speed 3, and, in, and more trains to and from Manchester, more trains to and from Glasgow, which could be happening in the next five or six years, we need to have a gateway, a world-class gateway, that when people arrive, they feel that they're arriving in a world-class city. And again, you don't have to just go over into mainland Europe to point at these things. There's some really cracking examples here now. If you go to St Pancras, you go to King's Cross. If you go to half of what Birmingham's new street looks like now, these things are happening, and actually we have an opportunity to create world-class gateways, not just at Lime Street, but at places like Moorfields as well, where a significant number of people travel daily into and out of 
uh, a Liverpool city centre. The other issue is there's a lot of traffic in the city centre, there's a lot of vehicle movement, which isn't great if you're a pedestrian or a cyclist. Um, and actually what we need, we need clear, strong internal public transport and pedestrian links so that people can move if they so wish by public transport. But actually we need to take out some of those miscellaneous journeys where buses are moving around, again not to take people from A to B, but actually because they need to get to the other side of the city. And we need to give um, bus operators the facility to park vehicles up rather than circulate around the city and that will then reduce um, the traffic flows within that city centre. I think there's some really early wins around improved cycling and pedestrian access. So how do you move around the city? What's your legibility? What's your wayfinding? Again, you don't have to go to the other side of the world to see this. You can go to Sheffield, you can go to Bristol, you can go to London, and they've already got really good wayfinding systems that point people in the right direction to allow people to walk safely. And part of that is about making sure it's an integrated offer but it's also about the design standards. So it's about making sure that you're not signposting people to walk down very difficult to navigate down streets, dark, dingy places, but actually that you invest in the public realm to make that a pleasurable experience. And again, there's lots of examples of where you can have flexible streets. And we'll be looking at some examples about better use of space, um, so actually shared space, but also flexible space, and actually investing in public realm to make sure that you're moving around uh, in an environment that is pleasant to be in. And again, just because you're investing in um, transport infrastructure, it doesn't mean to say that this has to be in an unpleasant way. It can be green, it can be functional, uh, but also it can be sustainable and a pleasurable place to be. It's only when you look at photos like that, you hardly realise there are actually quite a lot of vehicles on the photograph and actually using it, but actually it's about the sense of feel and safety and security. And again, looking at, as the Mayor said, significant investment in infrastructure for cyclists, so not just cycle lanes, but also wayfinding, signage, and actually encouraging people through educational programmes to understand what they need as cyclists. And again, cyclists are different, aren't they? So it's not just people that are cycling by commuter, there are people that live in the city centre that want to travel around at the weekends on bikes, that might be more difficult. So again, getting a, a better sense of, a better sense of what those requirements are. Stage D, um, this is where we are now. We've agreed the methodology. Um, we're developing this, this 15 to 20 year plan. Um, again, we have the opportunity to shape what's going to be in that first five year period. So what are the things that we can be spending our money on over that next five year period? What leads to um, the delivery of the SIF? And actually is flexible. So as developments are brought on stream, that we're investing in high quality public transport and other mechanisms for getting people to and from those sites. We're doing quite a lot of work on prioritising those schemes at the moment uh, and the intention is to bring that together uh, in December, which again, has quite a quick pace of work actually, so it'll be a year from, from saying to, to Mott, you're employed, to actually getting through to an outlined set of schemes to be delivered in the first five years. I think finally, um, this is not an academic exercise, I can assure you, because you travel around the city centre, you can see the developments occurring as we speak. You can see the investments going into schemes like cycling schemes. We have um, secured, through funding from the central government, a significant amount of money to be spent on transport improvements in Liverpool city centre over the next five years. So again, because this is the world I work in, we have to call it the city centre connectivity package. It's a set of funding for improving the way people move around the city centre. It's um, looking at improvements to the use of the Strand and it's looking at better public transport access from the north into Liverpool. That's about £50 million and with Liverpool City Council that's money that is ours, subject to the business case, but that is our money from central government that we've secured that needs to be spent and invested on the things that I've been discussing over the next five years. So when you have the discussion later on, I think it's important to bear in mind this is a great opportunity to really influence the mayor's decisions and opinions as well as others on real things with real money. And then also there's, there's money for sustainable measures, which again, subject to the business case, we have the opportunity to secure several millions of pounds to spend on active travel, things like pedestrians, uh, like cycling, again to be spent in the city centre. So it's almost like a planning for real things. So it's not just an academic thing, there is real money there to, to be had. We just need to make sure that we've got the right public engagement and support for spending that money. 
and then also we have opportunities through the EU. Hopefully that's given you a flavour of the work. Um, I haven't done any of that. Um, Mox have done that and people like Barbara Wade who's here tonight have done, done a lot of that work. We're in a really good position to influence and shape what we spend transport money on to deliver um, economic growth, um, sustainable growth, um, but also in a way that the people that live and work here want to see and making sure that we get the right quality of standards. And that really is about building on um, Liverpool's distinctive offer. So thank you very much for listening.